Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Steven with Inner Voice Media. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for lots of great content. In this tutorial, I wanted to do a basic overview of complete control and kind of get at what it's about and how it's different from a standard virtual instrument. In this video, we're gonna be doing a tour of the interface and looking at some of the basic functions. Then in a couple of follow-up videos, I'll look at keyboard integration with the Control S series, as well as some specific macro and performance-based techniques we can use with Control. So to get started, Control is not a virtual instrument in itself. Rather, it's a, it's a really cool way of accessing all of the different virtual instruments, at least the ones within Complete, that you have available to you on your system. And when we first open it up, we don't have anything loaded but we do have the library pane open and we can hide or show this by clicking the magnifying glass. And we can access both the, the standard libraries as well as our user libraries just by selecting between the globe and the head and shoulders image. If we wanna find a specific file on our system, we can just come over here. This shows us a listing of all the different complete instruments that we have installed on our system. And we can see here by clicking this pane that shows us the individual instruments, drums and percussion based, uh, sampled instruments, and synthesizers. I prefer to work from this view because this is more in tune for what control is really about. So I'm working on a track and I know that I need, say, a bass. Sometimes maybe I'll start from massive or absinthe or contact, but if I'm really just kind of flowing through the creative process, sometimes it, it's more beneficial to instead not worry about which virtual instrument creates the sound, but to focus on searching by the characteristics and, and nature of the sound. And so if I click bass here, now I have a bunch of options that show up. I can choose analog bass or digital bass, fingered bass, uh, distorted, etc. And I can always single click to deselect something. But regardless, whatever I've selected here is reflected in my available choices. I can also select by a particular mode if I want something that's an additive bass or FM or specifically monophonic or tempo synced. This gives us a lot of different ways to approach searching for sounds, uh, whether it's on how the sound's created or what type of sound it is. You know, is it a soundscape or is it, you know, maybe it's a, a synth lead and then we can choose between poly or mono, um, etc. To choose any of them, we just double click. If I wanna try something else, We call up something from Evolve, for example. So this is a really cool way of browsing through your, your library. Again, worrying about the nature and characteristics of it rather than which instrument creates it. We can actually set favorites if we find particular sounds that we like. So for example, we'll say I really love this uh, floppy bass here. If I have a mouse over on it, you'll see that there's this star. If I click that, and now it's added to my favorites. And it's right at the top of the list. So I can create a bank of favorite sounds and go to them really quickly from within control, but not be constrained only by ones within a particular instrument. If I want to remove something from my favorites list, again, just click it once and now get out of there. When I go back, we'll see that it's not in there anymore. So let's load up this acoustic bass. And this one comes from Prism. And we can see a basic simplified Prism interface here, but we have some ways of going deeper into the sound, depending on what we're trying to do and what level of detail we want to work at. The first we have here is our plus sign. This gives us the expanded view, which is the more in-depth view that we see inside the plugin itself, if we load it by itself. We also have a macro view, and the macro view shows us different controls that specifically affect different characteristics of the sound, and we can select different banks of macros, or we can move between them with these arrows. If we want to modify our macros, we can always click here. I'll be diving more into macros and performance-based stuff in a later video. We can actually stack these views if we like as well. So we have both macro view available and expanded view. And if we are using the control keyboard, these knobs on the keyboard will map directly to the macros that are active at the time. We have a couple other cool things up here. This is our performance pane. It lets us choose between certain scale functions certain arpeggiator functions, as well as some of the behaviors of the uh, pitch and modulation strips on the control keyboard. 
The scale function or the arpeggiator function, when I activate them, you'll notice this lights up blue that shows us, even if it's not visible, that we have something selected there. So in the arpeggiator view, I can choose whether it's arpeggiator or note repeat, uh, the type of arpeggio, the rate, and there's uh, eight different sequences available in addition to a generic arpeggiator, and the swing function. So this lets us kind of fine tune the arpeggiator to the specific groove or swing of our song. We can add additional octaves here and control the dynamic range as well as the gating of the arpeggiator. If I extend this past 100, we get a longer tail on the arpeggio. And if I bring it below, we're going to hear a choppier, punchier sound. We got some really cool performance tools in the arpeggiator itself. The scale function, if we turn that on, lets us choose a root note and a scale type. So for example, minor pentatonic, any note I play on the keyboard. Is mapped directly to that C minor pentatonic. There's also a pretty advanced and in-depth harmonizer and chord set mode which I'll explore in a later video. So these are some really cool performance-based functions. We also have some more mundane controls here. This shows exactly which control keyboard is hooked up. Uh, and this shows the BPM or tempo of our patch. If we're running this standalone, we can just double click and select a new tempo. Uh, and this of course will affect the speed, for example, of the arpeggiator. If we're running this inside of a DAW like Live or Logic or Pro Tools, the host will actually set the tempo and this won't be able to be adjusted. This is our output and this lets us control the actual signal output of the plugin. So if we're running it standalone, this is the output that's going to your sound card or audio interface. If you're running it inside of a host, then it is the signal that goes into the particular channel or track. And lastly, over here, we have our panic button. When we have a stuck MIDI note or we want to kill a long hanging MIDI sound, we can go ahead and just click that button and it will kill what's happening. So that's a basic tour of some of the functions. The last thing I want to look at is our preferences. We can go to edit preferences. Here we can look at, this is our library, both factory and user locations, where our plugins are as well as on the hardware, what is the velocity sensitivity and is the light guide enabled or not. And if we're looking at any particular audio routing or MIDI routing, this shows us our driver, which audio interface or device is attached, as well as the sample rate. If we're running standalone, we can adjust this directly and the available sample rates are set by your interface. If you're running this inside of a DAW, the sample rate will be adjusted directly by the DAW. Uh, we also can adjust our latency, overall latency, as well as how it breaks down for processing time versus output, etc. You don't see any input here because we're running this directly in standalone mode. So there you have it. That's a basic tour of Complete Control in the software. We'll keep an eye out for the follow-up videos where I'll be showing specifically how this works with the control keyboard, and then some later ones where we look at mapping and working with macros, scale and chord settings, and the arpeggiator. All right, thanks a lot. I'm Steven with Inner Voice Media. Again, please make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Take care.